What up, watch peeps? I unboxed this one a couple months ago and I really should have gotten back to a full review sooner because I love this watch. I'm a big fan of this brand. Their whole lineup is well executed. They're assembled in the US by their own in-house watchmaker. What more could you ask for? I am, of course, talking about Cincinnati Watch Co. Specifically today, we have the Divers Edition. So let's get to it. I'm Pete and we are Chillin' With Watches. Wrist check, I am wearing the new Seiko Feel Watch, which, oh, it's just another killer release from Seiko. I will do the review on this guy next week, but for now, let's take a look at this Cincinnati Watch Co. The Cincinnati Watch Co. uses very simple boxing, which is A-OK -okay with me, because what I'm interested in is this beautiful watch that is inside. Take a look at that gorgeous thing. So inside the box, you got your warranty card and a nice little pillow, and that's about the extent of it. But let's get to this guy. So you are looking at a 41 millimeter dive watch that is just really well done. Color-wise, these come in this black gilt model we have here, and there's also a blue dial. Now, price on these is $450. Let's talk a bit about what you get for $450, because it's borderline ridiculous. You get a Swiss movement in a completely original design, and it's all assembled in the U.S. by an in-house watchmaker. I mean, you got Sapphire, Ceramic, C3, everything you want. Crazy that they are managed to do that. So the first thing I noticed about this watch is this beautiful dial and handset. You see it is a black dial, but it has a sunburst effect that almost looks like a super dark gray in some light. Sorry, I know you're getting a lot of flecto there, but it has a really nice dome sapphire crystal and that's kind of unavoidable. You got really well executed applied indices in gold. A very traditional kind of layout, but also at the same time, it feels like something new. The date window has an awesome gold frame around it. Again, has that kind of vintage feel to it. Match date wheel inside. You get these lovely gold sword hands. Let me move them so they're not stacked. Really get great gold sword hands. They just look super bold on top of this black dial. Nice fat hour hand, and, and I love their seconds hand. It has that counterbalance to it, and at the same time, it has this big giant tip to it, so it still has a plenty of area for that nice C3 loom. And we'll take a look at that later because they have a bonkers application of loom on this thing. And I love the choice of C3 here because that creamy loom is just a perfect fit for the rest of the color palette in use here. Gilt text on the dial, very classy, very subtle. It almost disappears when you zoom out. If it was me, I may have went a little larger, a little more proud on the text, but I think it still looks great the way it is. One of the magic things they achieved here is the bezel insert. Most of the times putting a shiny ceramic bezel on a vintage inspired piece just doesn't work, but it does here. You totally get the vintage feel from this color palette that's in use and the design that's in use, but this sunburst dial and these applied indices all result in a modern execution of a vintage look. And this ceramic bezel, it just works. And if you take a look, it is a stadium bezel, which means it slopes inwards towards this nicely domed sapphire crystal. It's a great way to have a high domed sapphire crystal without it having to protrude ridiculously from the top of your watch. Zoom out. Now you can see here it is a tall bezel, uh, very reminiscent of the way Doxa does, bezel, does bezels. Grip is on the top. It's very easy to use, but it also allows you to have a thinner mid case without a lot of case back having to make up the thickness of the watch. The bezel action itself is terrific. Feels like a spring wire kind of action, which is very precise very clicky has only the slightest back bump after each click you can see here but once it settles in there it is rock solid and of course everything lines up beautifully now the mid case 
is lovely here. It has just this nice continuous curve, which is something I like in a mid case. And it does have polished sides brushed on the tops. But what's interesting is there's also, let's see if you can see it here, there's also kind of a curve from nine to three o'clock, which results in a watch that really hugs the wrist. And I think from underneath, you can kind of see how these lugs almost slope in both directions. On the other side, the case slopes up very slightly to meet the crown. If you can see that there, not quite crown guards, but what that does allow is for the crown to be very easily gripped. It puts it just far enough away from the bezel that using it is no problem whatsoever. Now the crown action is amazing. It is super smooth. And you'll see it is signed, has a nice coin edge grip to it. Moving on to the bracelet, you'll see we have female end links, so it does drape right away. They are solid end links. Starts at 20 millimeters at the lugs, tapers down to 18 millimeters at the clasp. That is a really nice, robust clasp. My only complaint is that it might be too robust. <laughs> You'll see the bracelet has these nice, thin, fine lengths, which I think go great with the watch, but then you have this really big clasp, comparatively. Nicely engraved, though, this clasp is with their with Cincinnati Watch Co. on it, as is the case back. I love that wave pattern. I just think it's funky and cool. Now, as far as what's inside, we got a really nice Swiss movement. So what do you say we throw it on the time graph and see how it's running? I mean, come on. <laughs> That's an absolute banger of a movement. Look at that, 298. What a beautifully high, powerful amplitude. It is running at minus one second a day with almost no beat error. That SW200 is on fire. You can tell this watch was regulated by a watchmaker. Well done, Cincinnati Watch Co. All right, let's go over the dimensions. And this watch is in absolutely beautiful condition. I apologize for the smudges, just hard to avoid. We are looking at a 41 millimeter case and it is 41 at the bezel as well. Lug to lug, it comes in at 48.3 millimeters and it is 14.2 millimeters thick. That is as I measured it, including the high domed sapphire crystal. Lug width, we're looking at 20 millimeters. Going over some of the other specs, we have, as I just mentioned, a nice high domed sapphire crystal. A wonderfully thick application of C3 Super Luminova. It's running a Salita SW200 movement inside and it has 200 meters of water resistance. On this bracelet, sized for my seven and a quarter inch wrist, it came in at 153 grams. Let's take a look at it on wrist. And here's how it wears on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. I think you can see it is a fantastic wear. Here you see that continuous sloped case and how it is kind of curved in both directions, how it just hugs my wrist wonderfully. I love this bracelet. It's super comfortable, really nice size. 41 for me is kind of my go-to diver size. Love the way this thing wears. You can see it does have that really robust clasp on it. But great wear all together. Let's do some side-by-sides with other watches. First up, I want to take a look at it alongside the Doxa because I think these watches actually compare beautifully. Now, the Cincinnati is a 41 millimeter, but with that larger dial opening, it looks larger than the Doxa, which is actually 42 millimeters. But I, I think as far as wrist presence goes, these two uh, wear very similarly. But what I really want to show you is this profile view, because I think you can see the influence of the Doxa on the Cincinnati. They both have this kind of similarly tall bezel with the grip at the top, uh, very similarly sized mid case. If I show you both the same side. And you see the Cincinnati does have a little bit more of a sweeping curve. The Doxa is a little more flat. But that overall look is very similar. 
even in the bracelet and honestly, even in the overly robust clasp as well. I'm a big fan of the Doxa, and I think that is a big reason why this Cincinnati appeals to me so much as well. All right, next up, um, another 41. The only other 41 I could think of was this CWC. Now, these are both the same size, these watches, but you can see the difference that a large dial versus a small dial makes in how the watch appears. CWC is quartz. But interesting comparison nonetheless. Lastly, the SKX, the benchmark SKX is about 42 and a half. So about a millimeter and a half larger than the Cincinnati. But again, you see that small versus large dial opening. Even though it appears larger, I don't think the Cincinnati wears like a large watch at all. All right. Lastly, let's get to that bonkers C3 loom I've been talking about. Keep the loom. This is one of the cleanest applications of loom I have ever seen. It's so crisp in person, it almost looks like an LCD screen. It's just really cool, very bright, big fat loom plots, no problem reading this thing in the dark. There it is, the Cincinnati Watchco Divers Edition. This is a fantastic watch that really showcases how to do modern execution with vintage inspiration. They nailed it. The spec sheet is a neckbeard's dream. There's just not much to complain about here. This is a great watch from some great dudes. All right, before I let you go, sneaker check, wear my blue van, old schools, and that's it, I'm out. If it's not too much trouble, please like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.